This presentation is for Chapter 8 Receivables, Exercises E814, S8234, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, and 13. You should pause the presentation and do these exercises and come back to check your answers. This exercise is to test your knowledge of these common receivable terms. Accounts receivable would be F, the right to receive cash in the future from customers for goods and or services performed. Other receivables would be E, a miscellaneous category that includes any other type of receivable where there is a right to receive cash in the future. Debtor would be A, the party to a credit transaction who takes on an obligation or payable. Notes receivable would be C, a written promise to pay a specified amount of money at a particular future date. Maturity date would be D, the date when the note receivable is due. Creditor would be B, the party who receives a receivable and will collect cash in the future. In this exercise, we will practice recording credit sales and collections for summer consulting. The first and second transactions concern consulting services provided to customers on account. To record the first transaction, we would debit accounts receivable Jones and credit service revenue for $1,500. The second transaction would be similar, but we would debit accounts receivable Cruise and credit service revenue for $865. Notice that we included the customer's name so that we will update the accounts receivable ledger for these amounts as well as the control account. In this exercise, we will continue recording credit sales and collections for summer consulting. In the first transaction, we collect $750 from our customer, Jones, so we would debit cash for $750 and credit accounts receivable, Jones, for $750. In the second transaction, we have consulting services provided to a customer on account. We would debit accounts receivable Taylor and credit service revenue for $625. Again, we need to include the customer's name when we record the transaction so that their individual accounts will be updated as well as the control account. In this exercise, we will continue recording collections for summer consulting. In the first transaction, we collect $865 from our customer cruise, so we would debit cash for $865 and credit accounts receivable cruise for $865. In the second transaction, we collect $1,375 total from customers Jones and Taylor. We would debit cash for $1,375 and credit accounts receivable Jones for $750 and accounts receivable Taylor for $625. In this exercise, we are going to apply the direct write-off method to account for uncollectible receivables. Shauna Valley is an attorney in Los Angeles. Valley uses the direct write-off method to account for uncollectible receivables. At April 30, 2018, Valley's accounts receivable totaled $19,000. During May, she earned revenue of $22,000 on account and collected $15,000 on account. She also wrote off uncollectible receivables of $1,100 on May 31, 2018. The first requirement is to use the direct write-off method to journalize Valley's write-off of the uncollectible receivables. To make this journal entry, we would debit bad debts expense for $1,100 and credit accounts receivable for the same amount. The second part of the problem asks, what is Valley's balance of accounts receivable at May 31, 2018? We see that after the write-off of the uncollectible receivables, the balance in the accounts receivable is $24,900. In this exercise, we will record the collection of a receivable that was previously written off using the direct write-off method. Spring Garden Greenhouse had trouble collecting its accounts receivable from Steve Stone. On June 19, Spring Garden finally wrote off Stone's $600 account receivable. On December 31, Stone sent a $600 check to Spring Garden. The problem is that we journalize the entries required for Spring Garden greenhouses, assuming they use the direct write-off method. On June 19, 2018, we would debit bad debts expense and credit accounts receivable Stone for the $600 bad debt. 
on December 31st when we received the check from Steve, we set the accounts receivable back up on the books by debiting accounts receivable stone and crediting bad debts expense for the $600 and then we would record the cash received from Steve by debiting cash and crediting accounts receivable stone for the $600. In this exercise, we will apply the allowance method percent of sales to account for uncollectible receivables. During its first year of operations, File Wine Tour earned net credit sales of $311,000. Industry experience suggests that bad debts will amount to 3% of net credit sales. At December 31, 2018, accounts receivable total 44000 The company uses the allowance method to account for uncollectibles. The first part of the problem asks us to journalize the bad debts expense using the percent of sales method. To calculate the amount of bad debts expense, we multiply 3% buy the net credit sales of $311,000 and get $9,330. Then we debit bad debts expense for $9,330 and credit allowance for bad debts for the same amount. The second part of the problem asks us to show how to report accounts receivable in the balance sheet at December 31, 2018. In the assets section of the balance sheet under current assets, we would show accounts receivable at $44,000 less the allowance for bad debts of $9,330 for a net amount of $34,670. In this problem, we will apply the allowance method percent of receivables to account for uncollectible receivables. The accounts receivable balance for Lake Inc. at December 31, 2017 was $20,000. During 2018, Lake earned revenue of $454,000 on account and collected $325,000 on account. Lake wrote off $5,600 in receivables as uncollectible. Industry experience suggests that uncollectible accounts will amount to 5% of accounts receivable. In the first part, we assume that Lake had an unadjusted $2,700 credit balance in the allowance for bad debts at December 31, 2018, and the problem asks that we journalize Lake's December 31, 2018 adjustment to record bad debts expense using the percent of receivables method. First, we need to determine the target balance for the allowance for bad debts account. The problem states that 5% of accounts receivable will be uncollectible, so we multiply $143,400 the accounts receivable balance at 1231-2018 as shown in the T account by 5% and we get $7,170 as our target balance. We then analyze our allowance for bad debts account and find that we have a $2,700 credit balance. To get the target balance in the allowance for bad debts of $7,170, we need to subtract the current balance of $2,700 and we get $4,470 for our adjusting entry. To make the adjustment, we debit bad debts expense and credit allowance for bad debts for $4,470. This gives us the target balance in allowance for bad debts of $7,170 after posting the adjusting entry of $4,470. In the second part of the problem, we are told to assume that Lake had an unadjusted $2,400 debit balance in the allowance for bad debts at December 31, 2018. We are asked to journalize Lake's December 31, 2018 adjustment to record bad debts expense using the percent of receivables method. Notice that the target balance in the allowance for bad debts is still $7,170. However, since we had a $2,400 debit balance in the allowance for bad debts account, we will have to add that amount to our target balance of $7,170 to get our $9,570 for our adjusting entry for bad debts expense and allowance for bad debts. Then we see after we post the $9,570 credit entry to the allowance for bad debts, we get our target balance of $7,170 in the allowance account. In this exercise, we are applying the allowance method aging of receivables to account for uncollectibles. 
The problem states that Surf and Sun had the following balances at December 31, 2018 before the year-end adjustments. The problem gives us the accounts receivable and allowance for bad debt balances of 81000 in 2063 in T accounts and an aging schedule for the accounts receivable. We can complete the aging of the accounts receivable by multiplying the percentages for each of the aging categories and determine the estimated total uncollectible accounts receivable. After completing the math on the aging schedule, we determine the target balance for the allowance for bad debts account to be $2,250. Since the balance in the allowance account is currently a credit balance of $2,063, we need to make a journal entry to record the adjusting entry for the difference of $2,250 and $2,063 or $187. We debit bad debts expense and credit allowance for bad debts for this amount. The second part of the problem asks us to prepare a T account to compute the ending balance for the allowance for bad debts. This T account shows in the slide the bad debts expense of $187, which is the amount of the adjusting entry we prepared previously. By adding this amount to the beginning balance in the allowance for bad debt account, we get the ending balance of $2,250, which is the target balance for the account. In this exercise, we are going to record the entries to account for a note receivable. The problem states that on June 6, Lakeland Bank & Trust lent $80,000 to Stephen Stowe on a 30-day 9% note. The problem asks us to first journalize for Lakeland the lending of the money on June 6. To record this entry, we debit notes receivable stow and credit cash for $80,000. Then the problem asks us to journalize the collection of the principal and interest at maturity and to specify the date. Since this is a 30-day note, we calculate the maturity date of the note as July 6. Remember, June only has 30 days. We then need to calculate the interest payable on the note. We take the principal of the note, $80,000, and multiply it by the annual interest rate of 9%, and then multiply it by the percentage of the year that the note is outstanding, which is 30 days divided by 365 days, and we get $592 in interest. We record the receipt of the principal and interest on July 6 by debiting cash for $80,592, and crediting notes receivable stow for $80,000 and interest revenue for $592. This exercise asks us to record a dishonored note receivable. McHale Corporation has a three-month $18,000 note, 9% note receivable from L. Peters that was signed on June 1, 2018. Peters defaults on the loan on September 1st. To journalize this entry, we first need to calculate the interest revenue that would be earned on the note. To calculate this, we take the principal on the note, $18,000, and multiply it by the annual interest rate of 9%, and then multiply it by the term of the note, which is three months or a fourth of the year. We get interest revenue of $405. To record the dishonor, we debit accounts receivable Peters for the principal and interest $18,405, and we credit notes receivable Peters for $18,000, and interest revenue for $405. McHale Corporation will now try to collect the accounts receivable from Peters for the total due or write off the amount if they are unsuccessful. In this exercise, we are going to calculate the, the three common ratios, the asset test ratio, accounts receivable turnover ratio, and the day sales and receivables to evaluate a company. Silver Clothiers reported the following selected items at September 30, 2018. Last year's 2017 amounts also are given as needed for the calculations. The first calculation will be the asset test ratio. To compute the asset test ratio, we take the quick assets of cash, $573,720, accounts receivable net at 2018 of 11000 and the short-term investments of $148,000 and add these amounts together for the numerator of $732,720. To get the denominator, we add accounts payable, $328,000, 
to other current liabilities of $188,000 to get $516,000. The acid test ratio is $732,720 divided by $516,000 or 1.42. Since this is the amount of quick assets easily converted to cash, the business has to pay the current liabilities. This is a decent quick ratio. The second ratio that we will calculate for silver clothiers is the accounts receivable turnover. To determine this ratio, we need the average accounts receivable for the year 2018. To get this number, we take the beginning and ending accounts receivable amounts, 11,000 and 165,000, and add them together and divide by two, and we get 88,000. We then divide that number into net credit sales revenue, which is 3,212,000, and we get the accounts receivable turnover ratio to be 36.5. This is the amount of times we collected the average accounts receivable balance during the year. Since our credit terms are net 30, we would expect to collect the average balance of accounts receivable about 12 times a year which is 365 divided by 30. So the turnover ratio is much higher than the turnover as determined by the credit terms, which is good. The last part of the problem asks us to compute Silver Clothier's Day sales and receivables, which is calculated as 365 divided by the accounts receivable turnover. By dividing 365 by 36.5, Silver's accounts receivable turnover we get 10 days, which is much shorter than the credit terms of net 30, so that shows that we are actually collecting our accounts receivable on average well within the credit period, and that is also good. This is the conclusion of the demonstration for Chapter 8.